Take off with Corson on the most unpredictable journey of the season. Watch the quirky story of a silly war. A buzzer took a monkey for a ride in the air. The monkey thought that everything was on Lieutenant the Mike Clark was leaving for Europe, not knowing what the future would bring. I hope I don't have to shoot these guys. With one drink too many, this mover and shaker. So if I shoot down five planes, come an ace. And I win $10,000, that's right? That's right. Diving. Would find himself in a fix from the journey of war comes the tale of Lieutenant Mike Clark. Just tell me where we are. How can I with a shot up compass? Damn it, Twickers, we're running low on fuel. Why possibly we're still over enemy territory? You be careful, Michael. We sure wouldn't want any harm coming to our American friend. I'm the American father. The other guy's the German. Herman. Hmm. Sounds German. An American flyboy who gambled his money. <laughs> you made book with Al Capone's nephew? His life? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Enough of this nonsense. Where is Captain Dickagoba? And his heart. Maybe we could take this a little further. Only if you promise to marry me. You're on. Really? Sure. The rules of war can be silly. Va is va. Well, it seems like everyone's an ace but Twickers and I. He told me you actually did shoot down the fifth thing. Right, but we were overruled by intelligence. Some guy Baker got credit for it. <sighs> oh, that gesture imply, Mr. Clark. Oh, uh, love and peace. It's an old Hawaiian thing. Oh, that effect. When you find yourself in McGilligan's Point, Ireland. Hi, do you speak English? Aye. It is quite common around here. A land where the lady folk are quite proper. Disturbing you, am I, Eamon? <sighs> Not at all, but the name's Mike. <gasps> and the police always have time for a drink. I have no one to share this with. Regulations be damned. What do you say? That's what I say, too. <laughs> a place where you may lose a bet. Just concentrate straight ahead. Hold her steady. That I'm doing, Michael. No, 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 not the water. But win a heart. Don't be shaming me, Michael. I'm prepared to sin, but not for the man who has no intention to wed me. Lost. We're in God's land, are we? Stranded. Once you land in a neutral country, international law kicks in. How the hell should I know? You gotta come get us. We gotta get back into combat. You and Twickenham just sit tight and wait for the police in Dublin. Waiting for Dublin. Miles away from the war. You got a car? Oh, there isn't a car within 30 miles of this place. And running out of time. What the hell for? The war will be over in a few days. Now, all bets are off. I have a solution. You file for bankruptcy. That way the betting man can't touch you. Can you give me direction? Is no. I, I don't think so. But I can show you the way. Enemies become friends. Is your oil line housed right here? Uh-huh. So if I shoot that, your plane will go down. Along with me too. Now all you gotta do is jump and pop your shoe. You're an imposter. I beg your pardon? You're not bloody English, man! Even best friends. No, toast. To Michael. Mike Clark discovers that in this part of the world... Okay, co-pilot, she's all yours. Daddy <laughs> Your wingman is. But there's not a sinner around here who'd be willing to find you. A woman. Maggie! Sorry, Michael, I was enjoying the majestic view. And war becomes a silly game. Starring Andrew Keegan. Your flying career? It's over. Hugh O'Connor. I have an idea. Why don't we just tell them the war's over? And Jade Urell. I want a proposal, not a proposition. I don't want to talk about it. You don't allow the poor devil to be cut to smithereens by your ruddy propeller. It's just a bird. Waiting for Dublin, chronicles of a silly war. There they are. I see them. Glory be. 
Over there, Father. Take flight and watch.
Do we have a Bradshaw? A what? A timetable. A train timetable. Well, you'd know better than me. They're up to something. And I don't know what. It makes me feel tense. I don't like the feeling. What have you been doing? Indulging. join you. Why didn't you just read my mind and have done with it? I think you misunderstand me. I do not wish to read your mind. I wish for you to tell me the truth. Questions, please. What is your name?
Cavs and Storm the Rain come back and produce some of the old fire that made him such a success? And if so, does young Kerr at this stage in his career have enough experience to cope with the problems that Higgins may pose? charge of this one tonight. He won't stand for any nonsense from either fighter. The two boxers now being called together. Remember what Higgins said at the weigh-in. He said he'd see off Kerr in the eighth round and he then cut that prediction to the fifth. He's confident, he has the experience, but all of Scotland is hoping Alec Kerr can <laughs>
Ready? Wait till the vehicles are fully loaded. They're food wagons, yeah? Yes. Outside. Just hold on a minute. Come on, get up. Get up. Get up. Move. 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 Take him.
you in a minute. Cool. Mr. Cohen. Mr. Cohen. Mr. Dawson's here. Uh. Danny. All right, son. Leave us. Hey, your jacket's ready. You picked a nice pattern here. You won't find more than a dozen like it. It's the real thing. Yes. Looks fine, Danny. A really nice bit of cloth. Uh, uh, the left shoulder's a bit tight. I expect you heard it. My son. How deep are you in? I'm ashamed to tell you I've been a bloody fool. I've thrown it all away. House, business, Sylvia as well, probably. She'll stand by you. Will she? Would she? You ask her. It must have taken a long time to get in as deep as this. Not all that long, six months. Booze? A bit, but it wasn't a drink, though. A woman? Somewhere, but she wasn't important. Did Sylvia know? In the end, she did, I. The truth now, Jack. Who do you owe and how much? It's all there. Lansdowne, 8,000. Bill McAvoy, 12,000. Tony Ross, 9,000. My God, Jack, that's 9,000 you're gonna have to pay. How the hell did you get in with him? The woman, it was nothing, but I started going to Ross's club because she went. I drank a bit because she drank. I never had any kind of affair with a woman before in all my married life, but it wasn't the woman. Then what the hell was it then? Danny, if anybody should understand, you should. I want myself silly. For what? We never had any kids, Sylvia and me, so for what? I don't have to be comfortable until they take me off to wherever they take old people off to these days. My grandfather came to Glasgow from Russia. He got off the boat at Leith, thought it was New York. <laughs> Never mind, he stayed. He worked from his house, sitting cross-legged in the kitchen. One of the, one of the old tailors, best buttonhole in Glasgow. My father the same, only he got on, opened the shop, kept it going somehow right through the depression, brought me into the business. And one day, not so long ago, I sat in the shop and I thought to myself, it all ends here. Nobody to pass it on to. They did all that work, those two old men. I sat and I thought, for what? At least you have a son. With him, there's always a chance, you know? Some hopes. That's all you need, hope. You can live on that. I'll see Ross. But first, what are your assets? The shop? Mortgaged it, borrowed against it. It's too late, Danny. The house? That goes to... It'll be a nice jacket. I'll finish it. Have it sent over. Danny, Danny. Can you talk to Sylvia for me? Break the eyes. I don't know how to start to tell her. You realise that it's been two weeks since we've had a night out together? Is it that long? Yes, it is. Time goes by.
And were you out this evening? I've been out to dinner, yes. Look, I'm sorry I dropped by so late. But I was on my way home from the airport and well, I just felt the need to talk to you about something important. Oh? Well, important to me anyway. Maybe not to you. Look, Sylvia, I'm thinking of closing down one of my shops. It's a big decision. Why? <laughs> because I keep hoping that Johnny will come back into the business. If I close one of them down, I've got nothing left to offer the boy. <sighs> Danny, I can't offer you any advice. I don't know enough, but... But if you forced me to, I'd say, forget all about Johnny. Let him find his own way. Just like that, eh? Look, I, I don't want to throw you out, but I've got to get up in the morning. Oh, yes, I'm a working girl now. I've got a job in a small boutique. It's owned by a friend. Is that friend a fellow? Don't be so stupid. That answers my question. You've never forgiven yourself or me for us sleeping together the night Jack died, have you? Look, you've had a long day, and so have I. Why don't you go home, have a good night's sleep, and... And doesn't what I want come into it? Somebody. Could be to we. She's coming in a bit fine. She wants to catch up playing. I want this square sealed off quick. 